Hello and welcome to the CrimeView FireView customer webinar series happening the third Wednesday of every month. My name is Jeremy Johnson. I'm a member of the TriTech marketing team and I'm very happy you've taken the time to join us here today. Uh, another big thank you goes out to those uh, customers and, and friends who were able to join us for TriCon recently uh, back in uh, month of March in Anaheim. We had a great time out there learning about some of the different fu different functionalities for the Crime View and FireView topics and, and some of the things that are coming up for those. So thank you to those that were able to join us for that user conference. So for today's webinar, uh, just so that you know how things are going to work in case anything uh, happens here, your dashboard is going to be the key to getting yourself connected to the audio as well as submitting any questions. So if that go-to dashboard collapses at any time, you can simply click on that orange arrow there in the corner to bring the dashboard back up, and that will give you access to that box for the questions. And go ahead and type your questions at any point during the presentation into that box. It'll they'll queue up at the end, and then uh, our presenter today will be able to cover those questions once the presentation is completed. And that brings me to our top topic for today, uh, supporting CompStat with CrimeView Dashboard. We're happy to have Jeremy Duval with us today. I'm going to go ahead and make Jeremy presenter. Good afternoon, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, yes, my name is Jeremy Duval uh, with TriTech Implementation Services. Uh, as Jeremy Johnson said, our topic today is supporting CompStat at your agency, both preparing for and hopefully using uh, the CryView dashboard product uh, during the meeting even. Uh, we should probably start with a little definition of what CompStat uh, means. I think most of you probably have a good sense of it, given the audience, but uh, it, it's short for either computer statistics or I think I prefer comparative statistics. Um, Developed back in the mid-90s in New York City uh, as a performance management system to try to uh, monitor and reduce crime. So at New York, they've uh, noted some considerable crime decreases over the time period it's been in use. Uh, in particular, you know, they've noted 77% between 94 and uh, 2010. Now, there are some criticisms of the uh, approach, of course, uh, as with any uh, approach, there's going to be pros and cons. Um, the specific reduction may or may not have been also uh, due to the COPS more grant, for example, getting more officers on the street, the decline of the crack epidemic, the changing uh, landscape of gentrification in various neighborhoods in, the, in that particular city. Uh, interesting theory about uh, the fact that lead was no longer used in um, both gasoline and in paint over time and what effect that had on that environmental factor had on crime rates and so on and so forth. But those things aside, there's been an undeniable impact on law enforcement practice since its introduction. And at, at this point is fairly widespread amongst medium to large agencies in this country. So what are some of the key features of CompStat as it pertains to uh, the crime view um, usage of it anyway, is that it's regularly recurring. So you're going to do this every week or every other week, maybe monthly, um, and that those different time periods are tracked. So there'll be some terminology I use over the course of the session that I, I prefer, although it's certainly debatable what terminology your agency use, but for example, what we call the report period, meaning you know what was the period that just ended that we're trying to gather the stats for. And then that's compared to the previous period, which we'll use weeks for our examples today. And then what was the uh, crime totals or what were the crime totals in the same uh, period in the previous year, right? So that we know that there's fluctuations over the course of the year in crime. So we want to kind of be fair that we're not comparing the dead heat of summer versus the middle of the winter uh, when we make some of these comparisons. And then we'll also look at what is the current period, meaning in, in our terminology, the period we're in right now that hasn't completed yet. So in other words, getting ready for the next CompStat meeting. Um, I have seen a number of agencies that do this on a monthly basis. Um, it's certainly a, a very straightforward way to do it, although it's probably not ideal given that different months have different uh, quantities of days. So, you know, we would encourage uh, the usage of a 28 day period rather than an actual calendar month here. Uh, in this example, we'll give today that we'll be using weeks. So that, that part won't come into play as much. But the key is that you want to try to compare equivalent durations if uh, you're looking at percent changes and things like that. 
Uh, the next big point here, given the focus of the Crime View suite in general, is that CompStat is geographically oriented. So where are these hotspots taking place? And are we aggregating them in terms of statistics uh, across the whole city or individual patrol areas? So we'll try to look at, at that as well. Uh, as far as <clears throat> the implementation of it at a department, one of the key factors is the accountability. So the patrol area commanders, oftentimes lieutenants, are responsible for what happens in their areas uh, and going on down through the, the staff of personnel. So they're going to be looking for things and be expected to know things about crime trends that are happening in their districts, what hotspots there were for previous time period, uh, some of the details of notable crimes that have happened, and then more importantly even, what do you do to synthesize that and come up with a strategy for uh, putting together a reasonable enforcement um, directive. So that's sort of the first set of steps. And then it's monitoring what enforcement activities take place, you know, against those directives thereafter. So uh, that's kind of a, a broad uh, overview of what we'll try to show today. And what I really want to do though is get into the application and uh, really get at how we would do this, uh, practically speaking. So let me jump over to the Crime View dashboard. And right now I'm in what's known as the designer mode. Uh, so you do have to have a certain level of access within the dashboard product to be able to get to this, this particular screen. You need to be an administrator or a designer. And so what I wanna do is create a new briefing book that we'll use as our sandbox here for today. So I can, uh, let's see, create the briefing book and give it a name and that should suffice. All right, so we have a blank briefing book that really no one can see yet. There's no items in it. And so what I wanna do is just really go from scratch here. Uh, how can we build the content uh, with the assumption that we're going to be having meetings every week on say Wednesday, like today, and the constat periods will be seven days where it's a normal calendar week, Sunday to Saturday. All right. And I'll show you as we go through this variations on you know, ways you can and tailor that to your department's uh, constat periods. So uh, what I'll do for this is I'm gonna create a series of uh, widgets. Those are the panels of maps and charts and so on and so forth that will show on the end user end of the application. We'll create four widgets representing uh, the four different time periods involved that we need to sort of uh, compare to one another as the course of the meeting. So uh, we need to look at the report week and we need to look at the current week and the same week last year and the previous week altogether. So we'll start with the report week because that's really the most important one. Um, so when we're in a widget, first choice we have to make is what sort of uh, widget, what, what widget type we're going to use. Uh, so I will say before we get too deep into this, that that is a choice that you have to make up front. There's a number of different types of widgets and you may find yourself for your particular agency's needs using a multi-layer widget. Uh, so for example, if the kinds of things you're tracking as part of your concept meeting looks at say part one crimes, but I've often seen that agencies are interested in looking at shots fired or shooting calls for service as well. So that's this uh, multi-layer widget type is a way that you can uh, sort of stack together information from disparate data sources. Uh, so we'll come back to that concept, but for now we'll start with a simple filter widget and uh, we'll work from the incidents data set. Now this is all data from Greensboro, North Carolina. It's sample data that's been massaged uh, and sanitized and so on and so forth. So don't read too much into the, uh, the particulars of what you see here uh, as we go forward. But in any case, we'll use their incident data set from the records manager system. And I want to capture all of the apartment crimes. So we'll go through and grab those. Now you certainly could have uh, your implementer develop a simple checkbox that just grabs all the apartment crimes at once. That's another option. Uh, but here I'll go through and grab the ones I want for my stats here. In this case, amongst the larcenies, I'm only choosing from vehicle. That seems to be a common choice just due to the quantity of shoplifting and uh, some of the other larceny types. We'll make sure to grab motor vehicle theft, murder, 
rape and robbery here, and that should do it. Okay, so uh, for this set of widgets, I'm going to approach this from the point of view of a specific lieutenant who's in charge of one particular district. Certainly, we could do this where we're aggregating the stats for the whole city, in which case, on this where tab, I could just turn the whole thing off, and that uh, makes it location agnostic. Uh, but in this case, I do want to choose just District 1 from uh, Greensboro PD, and then move on to the WEN tab. Now, the primary or most common uh, date selection technique would be to use this last X number of days, weeks, months, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but that situation doesn't exactly apply to the CompStat model in the sense that we want to create widgets that don't reset themselves until you reach the next uh, interval, in this case, the next Sunday, right? So here we can use another date selection method called the stats interval temporal filter, and that's sort of the key to this whole operation. Uh, we introduced this a few years ago. I don't know that we really publicized it as well as we should have, so I'm, I'm glad to be able to show that today. Uh, so the idea with the stats interval is that you're taking some quantity of days and it could be you know seven days 14 day or 20 day 28 day interval by default and then you know looking at sets of those so you know the last seven days ending on a saturday and then the seven days prior to that and so on and so forth so you know we have these existing intervals that are set for this application in a way to be a normal calendar week so you know we can see if i show the preview here it's looking at the last complete week is highlighted in red. Um, if I wanted the previous week, I would do an interval lag of one, you know, and that should show me the, the week before that. So um, that's kind of the key to this whole operation here. If you uh, do not have the normal calendar week uh, reporting period, which is not uncommon, you can do a different technique called a, a manual interval, in which case you could choose the day of week that your concept period starts on, so just click the little calendar and then go back in time a little bit and say you need it to start on a Monday instead of a Sunday. And that would be how you'd accomplish it for, for your agency's reporting uh, sequence. But in any case, we'll, we'll stick with the normal uh, Sunday to Saturday technique here. And uh, for this one, I'm going to be doing the report week's crime, so report week part one crime, we'll give it a title, and uh, we'll choose one interval of seven days with no lag. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, for being thorough, I should probably copy that title and put it over here on the result layer name as well. So let's go ahead and preview this, make sure it uh, does what we want it to. Okay, yeah, so I've drawn the boundary of District 1, and I'm looking at apartment crimes uh, for this week. So I'm satisfied with that. I can go ahead and save this. All right, so I have the, the, the really the, the start of this is pretty well established here. At this point, the neat thing is I don't have to redo all of those settings. I can just highlight that widget, say copy it, and then tweak a few things. So we do... Uh, let's say previous week part one crime and say okay and there's really only one element I need to change so it remembers the choices I had about the crime categories it remembers the geographic filter I put in place I need to come over though in the one tab and adjust this slightly uh, to say that there was an interval lag of one and then now it's the week before the reporting week that we are tabulating. Uh, let's see, and then make sure this matches as well. And we're good. So I can repeat this, um, the sequence here uh, two more times to give us the four widgets I'm seeking. So do, uh, let's see, report week uh, last year. Copy that for later. And on this one, I need to change the interval uh, significantly, or the lag rather, on the interval to go back 52 weeks. So that's going to give me the same 
the same week as last week, so to speak, but a year ago. And give that a name. And one more we're going to do where it's the, the week we're in right now. And we'll talk about why we want to do that uh, in a little bit here. So let's see, current week. And you know, so you have to take the, uh, the word copy off the end there. That's not too big of a stretch. So current week, part one crime. All right, so we've uh, created the four widgets we need. And now for those of you who are familiar with the, the designer process, these widgets, they exist, but they're not really visible to anyone yet. So what I want to do is go back over to the dashboard application itself. And uh, first of all, I need to put myself in the briefing book uh, that I had just created. So I would called this the supporting Comstat book. And right off the bat, it says there's nothing in this book yet. So what I would do is go to the library and uh, just power on each of the, um, the widgets that we just created. All right. So we've, we've added these to a page and we should probably give this uh, some sort of name, All right? So just as page one by default. So we could, you know, call this say report week comparison. All right, and that title shows up there. Now the key is I, I want to save this in its current placement. So in other words, with the particular set of widgets uh, enabled and with the title in place, and once I've saved it, then that is established for everyone else as well. All right, so you see we pretty quickly, within a few minutes, really put together a series of widgets that tabulate the crimes we're interested in tracking for the different time periods involved. So uh, report week would be, again, the week that the meeting is about. Uh, so we had 29 records in that week. The previous week we had 21, so there was an increase there. Um, the same week last year, though, we had a considerable, uh, considerably larger number. So these are some, you know, pretty quick insights uh, we might get, you know, from that. Um, oh, and I see actually, I made, I did make a mistake on the current week one, so we need to go back and check into that one a little bit here. It was giving us the same totals. The reason being is that I didn't change the where the one setting. So uh, what we would do instead of a 52 week period, we would do one interval uh, with no lag and instead use a partial interval, uh, meaning it's the portion of the week that we're in right now. So that was uh, my oversight on that. Okay, so we save that back and uh, go over to the dashboard again. Okay, so you see we have now 18 records because it's a partial, a partial week. So this is a real quick and dirty, you know, again, in a few minutes, we're able to put together uh, some comparison time periods here. And the beauty of it is that they don't really require any further manipulation in terms of the, the widget settings themselves. Uh, but what I want to do now is sort of look at a, a more fleshed out version of what I just did to give you some ideas of how you would actually use that during the course of uh, preparing for the COSTAP meeting, say if you're a lieutenant who's responsible for this district, or also you know, in the meeting itself, and whether that's the lieutenant you know, controlling it, or maybe oftentimes a crime analyst is doing that you know, in conjunction with them. Uh, so let's toggle over to another briefing book that we'd set up previously, um, focusing on the same geographic area, the same concepts would apply. Um, but we did a few, a few extra things here that are relatively easy to do, but you know, frankly, a little tedious to, to step through every machination of it in the designer here. So I'll just kind of show you the, the end product. Uh, so what we did on this page here was we're looking at the report week versus the previous week. But what we did is we just made a simple copy of the existing report week widget and then gave it a different name. So we called it pin map in one place, we called it chart in the other, and then just toggled what the display mode was for it so that we can see both things simultaneously. So you know, again, as a, one of the first steps, if I'm responsible for District 1 and preparing for this, we'd come in and look and say, okay, well, 
you know, we've had an increase in crime for this time period, went from 21 to 31. And also by looking at the charts, I can see which of the crime types uh, had differed significantly. Uh, so for example, there was a robbery this week where there wasn't last week, similar number of burglaries, uh, similar number of motor vehicle thefts, quite a few more larcenies uh, from vehicles. So that's driving most of the difference between you know, those, two, those two time periods. So these are the kind of insights you, you can get just from juxtaposing really the same body of information, but just putting a map version with the count and then on one side and then putting the, uh, the chart next to it. Um, so going further, you know, into this here, we have other pages of this, and this is where we can come back to the idea of having these multi-layer widgets. So part of what the, the discovery of the different hotspots and such would entail would be also come, coming up with where you want to do enforcement. So with these set of widgets, we're using the, the multi-layer widget, uh, technique and we're plotting the part when crime still, but doing it with the heat map and then plotting the different types of enforcement activities on top of that. So for example, if I expand the uh, citations, right? So this set of widgets really is looking at what were the previous week's problem areas? And then did we do enforcement in the areas uh, that most uh, required attention? So it's making those visual comparisons, you know, between where the hotspot is versus where we did enforcement of various kinds. Uh, again, so citations is one means of that. You know, we might look at, uh, do we do field interviews uh, in some other places or officer initiated traffic stops, so on and so forth. Proactive policing in general against the areas that were problematic in the previous week. What did we do this past week? So that's, that's an important part of the feedback loop uh, to check and make sure that we're, you know, sort of following our own advice here. Um, so this is what we're doing here. And, you know, during the course of the preparation, you're probably going to be looking at, you know, the individual details of some of these, uh, just to look at notable crimes and try to understand, you know, if there's any kind of trends looking at MOs or if your application has narratives, you know, baked into it. Uh, this demo, demo application does not have uh, narratives, but typically if you had that, you know, say we're talking about this robbery right here, that's a notable crime. Uh, if your application has narratives, it would be found underneath the additional record details here. Um, but, you know, in general, you're going to be scanning through the table and looking at some of the details of these things in preparation for that meeting so that you're the, familiar with, you know, what's happened in your district. So uh, some other ideas here, sort of expanding on the same, the same concept. If we're looking at uh, the current week, we can see you know, what's happened so far. And given that the meeting is already partly into the, the next period, you're starting to already keep up with you know, what are the new trends that are established here. So we'll look at the report week that is just finished, but then also what crimes have taken place uh, in the week to date basically is what, the, what that means. And then also monitoring, you know, what are the enforcement activities that were ongoing, you know, based on uh, the directives that were given last week. Uh, another technique you could use, uh, it would be to mark up those hotspots with uh, the spatial notes capability. Uh, I would encourage you to check out the Crime View Fire View uh, YouTube channel, uh, which I'll throw on a slide at the end here. Uh, I did a another webinar in January that went into depth on that idea where you could mark the map up and give instructions that the officers in the field would be able to, uh, you know, comment on and, and uh, do activities in. So make sure to check that out too. Um, so in any case, I think that gives a, gives a pretty good overview of the type of things you can do uh, with Crime View to support Comstat. Um, there's also another application we have called the Advanced Reporting Module. There's a Comstat tab within that Advanced Reporting Module. We'd hope to show you that in a future webinar. Um, again, check out the Spatial Notes and Missions webinar as well. Um, and in a future uh, view version of this software, the dashboard, we're going to try to work in some more uh, 
capabilities in terms of calculating those percent changes between uh, the different time periods in addition to seeing the you know the individual totals so um, again uh, there are other ways to do this we could do year to date or previous year to date uh, month to date so there's there's various ways to do that if you have any interest in following up with implementing something like this at your department uh, definitely feel free to seek out uh, myself again my name is Jeremy Duvall um, or work through the support team but uh, in any case, I, I wish you well in that endeavor and, and let me know if you have any questions here in the control panel. Let's see what's come up as I've been speaking here. All right, it doesn't look like we have any questions yet. So uh, we have a few minutes left. Uh, if you do have any questions, make sure to throw them into that box on the uh, go, to, go to webinar dashboard and we'll try to address those right now. Okay, let's let one who come in. Okay, so the, there was a question about when the next webinar is. Uh, there, um, Jeremy Johnson, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I believe they're the third Wednesday of every month. That is correct. The next webinar is scheduled for uh, May the 16th. And uh, Jeremy, maybe you could help me out. I, I'm having a hard time scrolling through the uh, question list there. It's very small for some reason. There's a, a box with an arrow in the top right of that question. Uh, okay, we can spend that on. Pop it out and get Good. more real estate. Okay, uh, let's see. This question is uh, fixing an issue with exception reports. Uh, doesn't show crime increase. There's no. Okay, so the question is in reference to uh, another product of ours, of ours called Crime View Desktop. Uh, there is a function there that's similar to this uh, that does produce a report that tabulates the percent changes and such. Um, well, without going into too much of a tangent, basically if there's a zero for one of the, for the previous period, mathematically you can't divide by zero. So it ends up as sort of a blank, a blank spot in that uh, report. Uh, which is true. I don't know that there's a, a workaround for that per se, unfortunately. Um, let's see, next question. Uh, exporting for reporting purposes. So there's a few things we can do. I think just screen captures are a great thing uh, with that snipping tool that is built into Windows now, but also uh, any one of these widgets, uh, if we're in the expanded mode of it, um, you can print the widget itself uh, using the print dialog here. Admittedly, the actual uh, print output is not cartographic, you know, professional per se, uh, but it does pump out an image of the map uh, with any of the other data elements you want to include, like the charts or the report, uh, meaning the table matrix, basically. So um, that's one way you can uh, spit data out. Another way is if you're looking at the table uh, within any one of the widgets, um, you can use the export function from the options tab. Uh, so you can export all of the, the records, or if you had one or more of them checked, um, you could then have the option to export just the selected ones. So that would spit out an Excel spreadsheet if I was to do that. Um, it's a few ways to, to get data out of it. Um, a neat thing, too, just as an aside about exporting from this uh, table matrix is it, even though it doesn't show them here, it also spits out the coordinates of the geography as well. So you could then import those into an actual GIS program um, as an event layer, as it's known. Um, let's see. Show us how to create the multi-layer widget in this webinar. Yeah, we have a minute. Why not, right? Um, let's see. So let's try Let's do a real quick one here. If I go back into the designer and I'm in my, uh, you know, playground here, we'll create a widget and I'll choose the multi-layer approach. And so, uh, let's say part one, I don't know, and shots fired, let's say, cause that's a common one, I think. 
So we'd add a layer, and this is the first one we'll do is the problem of crimes. And I make my choices for that one. Um, well, here, we'll grab a few. I'm not going to get the whole list for just for time's sake, but uh, grab a few. Let's say I'm still working on district one. On uh, the when tab, again, I need to use that stats interval uh, for an existing seven day interval. So that should be fine. And then that one's good. So then I would choose add layer. And let's say this is the shootings uh, and shots fired maybe for that. And then, but this one's going to come from CAD. So I choose a different query layer here. And then uh, let's see if my memory is correct on the codes that Greensboro uses. It's a discharge firearm and stabbing and gunshot wound. And then pick the same you know, geographic filter and the same stats interval setting. So this would basically be, you know, report week part one and shots fired. And oh, I also need to say which of those two is active. What that means is what are the stats going to show up for uh, is it this one or that one? So we'll start with the part one crimes as being the, the default one. And let's see what we get here. And while that's doing that, let me see if there are other questions I can answer. Uh, let's see, quickly determine if crime categories are up or down by uh, one or more standard deviations. Um, not, you know, not in this product. Um, that's certainly food for thought in the next version. So we'll be doing a major rewrite of this here eventually. Um, so that's, that's a good idea. We may be able to address something like that with a custom uh, function in the advanced reporting module that I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago here. But uh, in any case, that's that's not a current uh, a current function that we have right now. Um, all right, so yeah, going back to um, the question about doing the multi-layer widget, you can see the results now have um, the part one crimes, which are the colored ones, uh, like the blues, for example. I didn't choose all of the crime types just for, for uh, speed sake, but then the uh, shootings from CAD, which have a different uh, icon schema, show up as well. So you have a multi-layer widget there. So hopefully that answers that question as well. All right, any other questions uh, that you have? There's one final question there about uh, calculated averages, Jeremy. Okay, yep. Um, no. Okay. So there, yeah. So the question is: Are calculated averages available to determine thresholds? Uh, no. The, although that is something that's on the enhancement list, uh, more so in relation to what's known as the hot sheet, uh, which is something probably for another webinar, given the time now. But um, yeah, there's some talk of adding thresholds and using averages to drive what the hot sheet uh, threshold would be, as opposed to manually setting that. So. At present, no, unfortunately, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's something in the the enhancement request list. Okay, Jeremy, you want to wrap it up then? Yeah, it looks like that takes care of our questions for today. I want to thank Jeremy for uh, walking us through CompStat and giving us a lot of food for thought as we use the CrimeView products. And tune in next month, folks, just like was shared earlier on the 16th. We'll have another webinar for you to hopefully deepen your knowledge. Have a great day, everyone.